Tanzi, thank you so much for making the time for being with us today. We have been gathering members of this panel from coast to coast to coast. And I am Senator Mary Lou McFedrin. I'm hosting the first ever national summit, the Ottawa Summit on Vote 16. And everyone here will be speaking this afternoon uh, and we'll also have a parliamentary reception this evening. In a nutshell, we're here because Francophone young leaders more than 20 years ago came up with the idea of lowering the federal voting age to 16. And over the past 20 years, numerous attempts have been made by various members of parliament from different parties to bring in a bill to actually accomplish this. I'm the first senator to introduce a bill on the Senate side to lower the federal voting age to 16. And my bill is still active in the Senate. We had a very powerful speech yesterday and um, we will be revisiting the issue again next week. But today is about the Ottawa Summit on Vote 16 and two key takeaways from the research that's been done ever since Austria was the first major country to lower the voting age at all levels in its country in 2007. And the research has been done almost daily since then. And now what we have is a big difference between 20 years after the first bills were introduced to now, 20 years ago, it was all about opinion and prejudice because there was no research. 20 years later, we have a lot of credible published academic research from a number of different countries. And a number of those experts are here with us at the summit. And it comes down to this nothing bad happens when you lower the federal voting age to 16. It's all good. In fact, in the words of the Conservative leader in the United Kingdom, after changing her mind about this issue, she said, everything is positive about lowering the federal voting age to 16. So without further ado, I'm going to welcome and ask my parliamentarian colleague, Mike Morris, to say a few words. Mike. Well, first of all, thank you, Senator McFedrin, for your leadership in demonstrating that this issue will continue to be raised because we have young people across the country who are gonna continue to ensure that parliamentarians hear from them hear their experience as well as the research that shows that voter turnout increases when we reduce the voting age to 16, that we see uh, more engagement in our democracy, and most importantly, that we recognize that it is young people's futures that are on the line with respect to the decisions that are being made by parliamentarians, and so it's imperative that we involve them in their democratic right to vote. And so it's an honor to be a part of this conversation, but even more so, I think it's so important that through this summit, young people across the country are coming together co to continue to organize around Senator McFedrin's piece of legislation and around ensuring that parliamentarians from all parties continue to hear from young people in their communities that they're going to continue to advocate to reduce the voting age to 16. Thank you, Mike. And now I'd like to ask Sabrina Delhan, the Executive Director of Samara Center, to speak. She's not here. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. Um, I'm going to ask, we'll start on this side if you could introduce yourself. Thank you. Yeah, hi. hi. Uh, my name is Sam Roosh, and I'm the Executive Director of Apathy is Boring, and I'm thrilled um, that we, that's fine. Um, I'm thrilled to say that we are have endorsed and support the Vote 16 uh, campaign as well as um, support Senator McFedrin's um, Senate bill. Uh, we, or I should rather say myself, I have worked for nearly a decade in the youth political and democratic engagement space and have been asked, I can't even tell you how many times, um, why don't young people vote and why don't they turn out to vote? Uh, and there are a number of reasons, of course, many of them motivational in nature and, and what we would call motivational barriers. And the science and the research is clear that extending voting rights to 16 and 17 year olds and allowing them to participate in their first election uh, earlier in life when they're at a less volatile stage, typically living at home, typically um, in classrooms engaging with their teachers, 
on matters of civic and democratic engagement improves the likelihood that they will turn out and vote and improves the likelihood that they will participate long term in our democracy. As youth voter turnout has declined um, over the last 50 years, it's essential for the future of this country, for the um, perceptions um, of our democracy and the trust in our institutions that young people be able to participate. And this is one way that we can reform our system in order to enable that. Thank you so much, Sam. And we're really thrilled that Apathy as Boring has been such a strong partner and co-host for this. And speaking of strong partners and co-hosts, if I may ask now, Claudia Leclerc. Oui, absolument. Bonjour. D'abord, je veux juste reconnaître que nous sommes sur les terres euh, qui font partie du territoire traditionnel non cédé des peuples Anishinaabe algonquins. Et moi, je suis originaire de la Colombie-Britannique. Euh, alors, j'habite et je vis sur les terres traditionnelles non cédées des peuples Musqueam, Squamish et Tuolumne-Tooth. Fait que tout d'abord, euh, je suis ici pour représenter la Fédération de la jeunesse canadienne française et son réseau. Et on tient à remercier la sénatrice Marie-Lou euh, McFadren et les organisatrices et organisateurs du sommet sur le vote 16 et aussi surtout de nous inclure dans le cadre de cette conférence de presse. La Fédération jeunesse canadienne française, la FJCF, c'est un organisme pan-canadien qui est par et pour les jeunes, qui porte les intérêts de la jeunesse canadienne d'expression française vivant en situation minoritaire âgés entre 14 et 25 ans, et on a comme mandat de stimuler l'épanouissement de la participation citoyenne de cette jeunesse en lui offrant des nouvelles possibilités de vivre, de s'éduquer, de travailler et aussi de se divertir en français. Fait que depuis les tout débuts, la FJCF favorise la participation active de ses membres, de son réseau à la vie démocratique au Canada. La jeunesse est engagée et souhaite pleinement participer à la prise de décision et aux choix qui affecteront notre avenir, mais surtout notre aujourd'hui aussi. Comme tout autre chose, bien, voter, c'est une habitude qui se développe. Fait Accorder le droit de vote dès l'âge de 16 ans, c'est encourager le développement de cette habitude alors que les jeunes se trouvent encore dans leur cellule familiale. Ça favorise une participation accrue au processus électoral. C'est aussi une façon stratégique de capitaliser sur le fait que les jeunes évoluent encore à cet âge dans un environnement scolaire. Fait que le fait d'être plus encadré, ça va favoriser l'initiation au vote et à l'apprentissage de l'importance d'une participation citoyenne éclairée pour l'ensemble de la jeunesse. Parce qu'en plus de vouloir réduire l'âge de vote à 16 ans, la FJCF souhaite vraiment un cours d'éducation civique soit offert dans toutes les écoles secondaires au Canada pour bien préparer ces jeunes à leur première expérience de vote et leur rôle de citoyen. Fait Au niveau de la francophonie, ça fait plus qu'une dizaine d'années, comme euh, la sénatrice a mentionné, que la FJCF porte le dossier au niveau national et aussi, d'ailleurs, même plus avant ça, au niveau provincial, le Nouveau-Brunswick lutte euh, depuis plusieurs années. Un petit clin d'œil à notre membre, la Fédération jeunesse francophone du Nouveau-Brunswick, qui lutte pour le vote 16 depuis vraiment euh, plusieurs années. Depuis, de nombreux parlementaires se sont intéressés à la question et proposent des projets de loi pour réduire l'âge à, à 16 ans. La FJCF est vraiment pleinement en faveur de cette initiative, puis on trouve qu'il est temps que le Canada rejoigne la liste grandissante de pays qui priorisent la voix des jeunes en leur donnant le droit de vote à l'âge de 16 ans. On accuse souvent aussi les jeunes d'être désengagés. Mais est-ce vraiment le cas? Puisque nous étions réellement à l'écoute des jeunes, on réaliserait qu'elles nous demandent le droit de se prononcer et le droit de décider sur des enjeux sociétaux, et ce qui affecte aujourd'hui et aura certainement un impact sur notre avenir. L'État confère déjà de nombreuses responsabilités aux jeunes de 16 ans. En 2024, à l'ère où l'accès ou l'information est à portée des doigts, les jeunes ont pleinement la capacité de bien s'informer pour faire un choix éclairé. Des jeunes épanouis et motivés sont le moteur d'une communauté vivante. Et elles sont notre plus belle richesse collective et je trouve qu'il est impératif d'encourager leur participation citoyenne active et de leur donner les moyens d'exercer leur voix dès l'âge de 16 ans. Et qu'on est amplement en faveur et heureux d'être ici aujourd'hui. Merci. Merci bien, Claudia. And a number of years ago, I received a six-page letter from a 15-year-old high schooler who was on his own mounting a campaign in his home city around lowering the federal voting age to 16. I immediately connected with him and I now would like to introduce you to no longer 15-year-old <laughs> Alexi Tovinian and he is the national coordinator of vote16.ca co-hosting the summit today. 
Alexi. Thank you, Senator. Good afternoon. My name is Alexi Toivyanen. I am the co-founder, general coordinator of Vote 16 Canada. We are a national advocacy group dedicated to the extension of voting rights to 16-year-olds in federal, provincial, territorial, and local elections. The highlight that I wish to share today is that 16 and 17-year-olds are ready to vote. There is a growing consensus in neuroscientific and social science literature that 16 and 17-year-olds have the mental capacity to cast a vote. According to the research by world-leading expert and adolescence Dr. Lawrence Steinberg, 16 and 17-year-olds have the mental capacity for the long-term thought-out decisions involved in voting, cold cognition, as psychologists call it. 17 countries have now enacted this change around the world, and as the Senator indicated, the results are overwhelmingly positive. I want to highlight research done in Austria, Belgium, and Germany, which has found that 16 and 17-year-olds also display adult levels in the quality of their vote choice. They are able to make their voting decisions as effectively and as competently as adults. I encourage all senators to vote in favor of Bill S-201, the Vote 16 Act, at its second reading vote in the weeks ahead. Thank you for your time. Thank you, Alexi. Um, not that long ago, I guess it was maybe in, in January, I was able to be in Surrey, BC, and I had great pleasure to meet Ravjot and also her colleague Jaya, who's here with us, from Vote 16 BC. Over to you, Ravjot. Thank you, Senator. So, um, good afternoon, everyone, and I would like to begin by thanking the people in this room and those who will be attending the summit later today for contributing your time to this event. I am Ravjot Sarau, one of the two co-leads of the Provincial Vote 16 BC campaign, which is aimed towards lowering the minimum voting age requirement to 16 in British Columbia and federally, and encouraging youth involvement in politics. As a part of this campaign, I aim to create a space for myself and others like me in the political system, where our concerns are not only heard, but also acted upon. Youth today contribute substantially to all aspects of society. We run businesses, volunteer, work, advocate for ca causes that matter to us, um, advance STEM innovation, and do so much more for our communities. There is no reason as to why we shouldn't get a say over the decisions that directly impact our future. As a 17-year-old student and social justice advocate, I firmly believe that youth aged 16 to 17 years also deserve the right to vote. Canadians are beginning to understand the importance of giving our youth the right to vote. I have been involved with Vote 16 BC for the past three years, and over my time as a part of this movement, I have witnessed our communal support increase substantially. This is evident in terms of the number of civic organizations, community groups, municipalities, and government representatives who support lowering the voting age to 16 in Canada. Organizations such as the British Columbia Teachers Federation, BC Government and Service Employee Union, and numerous other labor organizations are just a few of our supporters. Vote 16 is a promising cause that will help shape Canada's future positively, and I'm thrilled to be one of the youth leaders at the forefront of this movement. Thank you for your time, and I'd be happy to take any questions. Thank you very much, Rav Jotan. There's not room here on the podium, but I do want to indicate to um, those who are, are watching and may have an interest in interviewing that we have the co-counsel as well as three of the litigants, young litigants, who are bringing a charter challenge to the Government of Canada for the based on discrimination on the basis of age on the issue of lowering the federal voting age. And we also have young leaders with us who've traveled here to Ottawa, including uh, Sophie Robinson, also from Vote BC, and uh, Keegan Newman Boyd from the Yukon. And uh, we have uh, also from uh, uh, young leaders from Brazil um, and New Zealand. So um, we're all here and we very much welcome your attention. Thank you. I don't see any question on, online or in the room, so that would conclude the press conference. Thank you for your time. Thank you, Thank you very much.